Hi everyone, I'd like to give a talk about the myoelectric process control. If we overview the development of the both upper and lower processes, the mechanics feature of them are well matured. However, interfacing to humans' neural system and the control strategies are yet to meet user fulfillment. In this talk, I will divide the sections into these two topics with the overview on the state of the art. We will start from the interfacing. There are multiple ways to interface biological signals and control assistive devices. The biosignal from a human can be EEG, ECOG, ENG, EMG, and mechanical sensors. The raw signals are difficult to decipher the motor intent. So we often extract features such as getting action potentials, amplitude, seen in time domain, or spectral. There are broadly two ways to control the assistive devices, which are data-driven approach or model-based approach. For the data-driven approach, there are, for example, direct mapping, classification, and integration. They are all based on upfront data set to control the assistive devices. We are pretty much interested in muscle interfacing as muscles reflect the neural activities that are originated from brain's motor cortex. The signals generated from the brain will descend through the spinal cord to the muscle fiber and amplify the signals to the level which we can pick up at the surface of the skin. Muscle is behaving as a biological amplifier. I will explain in the later slides, but this has the potential to detect the missing limbs muscle activation if the nerves are innovated to the remaining muscles, which is TMR. Depends on the severity of the amputation and what level of signals we want to get, there are several ways to interface a muscle starting from invasive, non-invasive, and minimal invasive. The invasive method implies a way to implant an electrical circuit inside the body and transmit the data either wired or wirelessly to the assistive devices. There are several ways proposed for this method. And this example is using reverse and forward telemetry for the wireless transmission. The most classic and commonly used method is this non-invasive method. There are several montage for this, starting from monopolar, bipolar, and high density. I will not go into detail of each montage as it is covered in a different talk. This is a highlight on what we are working on our lab. The potential on using the high density EMG is that by using the source separation technique, we can back calculate the source signal that are coming from the spinal cord. As the tissue surrounding the muscles are behaving as a low pass filter, the information we can get from a global EMG is not reliable enough. Getting the neural code by the non-invasive method opens pathway to the next generation's assistive device control. Also, if we combine the source separation method to the TMR surgery, we can get higher amount of information for the missing limbs neural activity. This is very strong in getting more reliable and higher dimensions of the motor intention for the limb loss patients. This is an example video on how the patient who got a TMR surgery can produce separation on the motor intent activation. The command that is shown in the uh, top of this slide is the motor command for the patient, and the blue screens are what we are getting uh, information from the EMG activity. As you can see, the different motor command represents a different heat map from the muscles, which is much more higher uh, control dimensions than the conventional method that we are using without using TMR. The last approach is using the minimal invasive method. This is a way to overcome the bar barriers which surface EMG has, such as having a firm connection to the skin and crosstalk. 
since this thin film electrode will be inserted just beneath the skin, it can mitigate those issues that surface EMG has. Then we will move on to the control strategies. We will start from the low density EMG paradigm. This figure is representing the early stage control strategies, which is using only one EMG channel with a threshold to control different gestures. This is very easy to use and robust, but the number of the gesture it can produce is limited. The next paradigm is using TEMG channels, which agonist muscle represents one gesture and the antagonist muscle represents another gesture. This is better than having just only one channel, but still far from the multifunctional control. To overcome these issues, more advanced control strategies have been proposed. Once multiple EMG channels are implemented, for this example, 8 to 16 channels, we can use machine learning approach. One way is to use a classification method, which we map to the different hand gestures depending on the different hand uh, muscle activation patterns. This is widely used in the research and commercial sector as this can achieve multiple gestures. However, this is not as intuitive as a neural natural hand moves and still faces difficulties in translating to the real world situations. The more intuitive method is called regression control, which a linear mapping to the kinematic of the hand joints is performed. In this way, the corresponding joints are simultaneously and proportionally controlled, and the user feels more intuitive than any other method. However, due to the crosstalk effect, the number of the DOF that can be separated is limited to two DOF, and still limited to the lab environment. This is a demonstration of the linear regressor control by using eight channels of the surface EMG. The left-hand side video is showing the conventional method, which is direct control, and the right-hand side is using a linear regressor. As you can see, the linear regressor is quicker to complete the task, which is representing how intuitive the control is. There are further ways to overcome limitations of reg regression control. This is to use additional information to improve the control accuracy. For example, the use of multimodal sensory fusion or computer vision. This enables the process of control to acquire contextual information that cannot be captured by EMG. This is a demonstration on how the sensory fusion between the EMG and the computer vision can perform smoother and higher degrees of freedom control than conventional method. The user's input is an EMG channel uh, which is only grasping or opening the hand, and the computer vision will control the pronation supination of the wrist and the gesture of the hand. Other way is to use neural code that are separated from high density EMG data. Although this requires more comp computational power to the system, we can use more reliable information about the neural activity. One of the demonstration is to use a synergistic approach on two dimension areas, which we combine index point and pinch grasp as individual movement and combine them together to perform the grasping gesture. Essentially, we can perform infinite solutions in the workspace. This example is more common in lower limb processes, but using adaptive technique is another way to increase the intuitiveness. This idea is to have the system reach human motor control and intelligent process control function as one system. The controller will continuously monitor the gate cycle and adjust the joint angles based on the predefined joint coordination. Although this can adapt to the walking speed and inclination angle, the manual tuning is needed. To overcome this burden, a reinforcement learning is proposed and proven to be effective. Another way to control is the model-based approach. As biological limbs movement, 
can be generated by different EMG patterns, and this varies across individuals. A Ford musculoskeletal model is proposed to mimic the biological process. This can directly incorporate physiological and biomechanical constraints, and with T T TMR surgery, this model-based approach has a potential to reconstruct the internal biomechanical representation of missing limbs. So those are the overview of the current state of the art for the interfacing and control method for the assistive devices. What we think of the next generation's clinical processes key areas are incorporate TMR surgery to get access to the missing limbs neural signal, use a chronic or implantable myoelectric sensors to overcome issues of surface EMG, and use advanced control algorithms such as blind source separation to get the neural code to have reliable neural information. This is the end of overview, and thank you for listening. <laughs>